What the fuck is this? Whenever you think about a FNAF fan game, what probably comes to your mind is something such as Finance at Candies, Pop Goes, Finance at Treasure Island, What the fuck? Joy of Creation, or even Tekken Sun's Lumberco. These are all fantastic yeah. games, but there's something about yeah. them that they share that I find kind of stale. Their art style. These games all mimic the original Finance at Freddy's style, whether it's intentional or not, and this can be said for most FNAF fan games. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing at all, but I do wish there was just a fan game out there that could spice up this genre. A game with unique story, gameplay, and an art style that really pops out. Oh wait, there is. And I already showed it. Playtime with Percy, in my humble opinion, checks all the boxes when it comes to what I wanted for a new FNAF fan game, and even more. I could quite honestly even say the game is perfect, but I am getting ahead of myself. What the hell even is Playtime with Percy? <coughs> Released on August 4th, 2023, Playtime with Percy was created by Fazzy Funbear and was made in Click Team Studio. The game was first announced on June 16th, 2022 on Fazzy's Twitter which already revealed a handful of things such as who the cast was and this weird Tamagotchi looking thing in the center. That will be very important later. When you load up the game, you get this nice little logo which is accompanied by a little tune. It's not important to the game in any way, but I just thought I'd point out that nice little detail. But finally, let's get into the story and gameplay of each night. Boss? Thought he'd stop calling by now. What does he want at this hour? Hey, boss. Hey, Nick. I hope you're doing well this evening. Yeah, I am. I'm glad you are. Things have been fine for me as well. So, why did you call me? Alright, I was hoping you could do a favor for me. You haven't forgotten about Percy's Playhouse yet, right? Of course not. Why? Well... Business hasn't been great ever since I laid you off. I had to shut the place down last week, in fact. However... There's plans for the whole building to be demolished Friday morning. And I really don't want any hooligans breaking in and taking anything valuable. I plan to sell most of it throughout this week, actually. So would you be willing to watch over Percy's until Friday? You wouldn't have to do much, only stay in there until the morning. And maybe some bonus chores as well. What do you say? I'm not sure. What'd be in it for me? Oh. Uh... $250. I'll even throw in a free gift basket. Okay, sure. I'll do it. How hard could it be? Perfect! You can start tonight. Go on over to Percy's before 8pm. I'll explain more once you're in the office. After that amazing intro cutscene, which I dubbed myself by the way because this game doesn't have voice acting, what? you can choose between just starting the night or going through the tutorial. I wouldn't normally skip covering the tutorial, but it does explain things very well, so I'll skim through it a bit. The game doesn't have any voice acting, which means there are no phone calls at the beginning of your night. Everything is told to you straight up at the top of the screen. To start, you need to grab both your pal boy and pal Percy. Just a quick side note since we're on the topic of audio related things, this game's original soundtrack was not composed by Fazzy himself, which it would be amazing if it was, but it was actually composed by three people, Martin Arthur, Jenny Bastard, and Dice Games. Anyways, back into it. Unlike a lot of FNAF fan games, and mostly the official games, this game actually requires you to use your keyboard quite a bit. To open your pal Percy, you need to press Q, and to open your pal boy, you need to press E. This game is very unique in the way that there isn't actually a set amount of time you need to survive for each night. 
it can actually vary in length depending on how well you do. And you're probably wondering, how do you perform well? And to answer your question, it's with the Pal Percy. You will notice when you take out your Pal Percy, there are three different buttons you can choose to press and a bar with a fraction above it. These are the three games you can play to satisfy your Pal Percy and help you progress to finishing your shift. You can either feed your Pal, which involves catching treats, give your Pal water, which involves pouring water into a bowl, or play catch with your Pal, which has you throwing a ball to it. Each mini game gives a different amount of points. Catch gives three points, hydrating gives two, and feeding gives just a single point. To prevent only playing a single game to get as many points as fast as possible, it won't allow you to replay the same game again after you've played it once. And in some cases, it will only allow you to play the game you haven't played after you've completed the other two before allowing you to select them again. Speaking of your pal Percy, if you don't play any games for a while, it will start to beep and get angry at you, which will slowly start to take away points and roll back progress. What are you looking crazy for? Gregory. This is honestly a fantastic way of reinventing the timer, and it adds a ton of chaos on the later nights. Now to your pal boy, which is basically just the camera system. The layout of the playoffs is actually quite small and only has 6 cameras you need to look at, if at all. The early nights don't exactly require you to look at them, and even in the later nights, you barely use them at all. Well, at least compared to a game like Final Fantasy Freddy's 1. Your pal Percy is what your main focus should be on, and the cameras are second. At least, for now. Anyway, the 6 locations the cameras are located in are Blue Storage, Yellow Crafts, Red Break Room, Green Playroom, The Show Stage, and Rat Cade. Three animatronics are able to be seen, Rowan Rat, Mother Moose, and Charlie Cat, but only Mother Moose and Charlie Cat are active on Monday. They essentially work the same but are opposites of each other. When Charlie Cat peeks through your room through one of the vents on the left or right side of your office, you will need to keep your utilities down. If it's your pal Percy, you don't need to worry as it does save your progress on the game you are currently playing, if you are playing one at all. If it is Mother Moose, you need to do the exact opposite and keep your utility up. After a while, they will both go away and there's actually quite a wide gap for you to take your utility up or down before they jump scare you, ending your run. This is essentially all you need to know to start your first shift. As Charlie Cat and Mother Moose get closer and closer to you, a song will start to play which indicates how far they are, in which after you've dealt with them, it will start to calm down. The first night is pretty easy and sim- Wait, what? Your nights actually aren't that simple. <laughs> After you've completed the main shift, there is a post-shift minigame you have to complete, each one of these being different and unique to each night. This is an awesome change of pace from the other FNAF fan games, and it is also really fun as well. On Monday, you need to sell off all 5 animatronics online at the correct price that is listed using a computer. If you get an offer that is not equal to the correct price, you need to decline it. But of course, it wouldn't be that simple, would it? Before each decline, you will need to input a confirmation code using the keypad on the screen. Once done, the offer will only go up $100 from the last one. You will need to keep repeating this process until... Shit, get down! Yeah, you also need to listen for Charlie Cat walking by, and when he does, you need to press E to hide under the table, until he goes away, which you are then safe to get out and start doing your task again. There is also a chance for you to lose internet connection, but the counter is simple, as all you need to do is click on the correct connection to continue. After you sold off Charlie Cat, he definitely gets pissed off by that, because things start to get intense. Charlie Cat starts to walk back and forth more often, the monitor starts to glitch out, the confirmation codes are now 4 digits instead of 2, the internet will go out a bunch, and even pop-up ads will start to appear that you need to close. But after all of that, okay, I did it. your first shift is over. You might have wondered if there is any incentive to complete the nights as fast as possible, besides focusing on your non-existent friends, and to answer that, there actually is. At the end of each night, you will receive a rank from S to F, S obviously being the best, and F being the worst. Rank F! Depending on how you do, you can receive up to a 5 point bonus head start on the next night. Speaking of which, on to Tuesday. On Tuesday, you will notice that 
Well, mostly everything is the same. What? You thought the entire place would get flipped upside down within a day? Anyway, for real this time, you will notice that this night your pal Percy actually has 5 more points you need to earn in order to make him fully happy. This is how nights will become progressively harder, in addition to adding new characters and making existing ones more active. Speaking of new characters, Farmer Felix is introduced this night and to deal with him is pretty simple. As he stomps in the background, check for the colors of his eyes which will be either blue, red, green, or yellow. And then on the left side of the office, there will be a Simon Says pad on the ceiling, and you need to press the color that corresponds to Felix's eyes. Failure to do so will result in your run being cut short, and those extra points going to waste. Now with all this information out the way, let's complete the night. We don't want that. Charlie Cat. Hello. We're gonna oh, be there in five years. And we won. Boom. This post night minigame is an arcade game. A game within a game that is centered around a handheld game. That is a lot of games. The goal of this minigame is to beat the high score on this Galaga-esque arcade machine. There are different types of power-ups you can get within the game, such as a fire rate booster, shield bubble, and more hearts. There are also different types of enemies that will give a different amount of points. The game is pretty fun, and it is also accompanied by an awesome song, which I played earlier in the video. While you're jamming out though, you may hear something behind you. Whenever you hear a sound behind you, you'll have to pause the game and quickly turn around to flash a camera. And once you do, Mother Moose will be staring right back at you with a wide grin on her face, before disappearing into the abyss. This seriously freaked me out the first time I played, and the way it goes from shooting at spaceships and listening to the music, to pure silence and complete and utter darkness, just to be broken by a single camera flash. And Mother Moose. Once she goes away, turn around and get back to blasting ships again, but listen for the sounds behind you. After a certain amount of progression, like Charlie Cat, she will get pissed. The music starts to get intense, and Mother Moose now takes two camera flashes to go away instead of one. This doesn't really change anything though, because once she uses the flash once, you can just button mash Q until the cooldown for the camera is gone. Mother Moose will go away and you can just get back to your game. Something that I feel that could have made this section more intense would be a limited amount of camera flashes, or not clicking the button too fast, otherwise your camera would break. Anyways, finish the game, the game, the game, the game, the game, the game, 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 or well a bit more than halfway because there are only 5 days, but whatever you get the point. Taking out your pal Percy and you will notice it looks a bit... different. But hey, it's probably just a glitch. Don't worry about it. You should worry about the uh, new animatronics that's loose though. Percy Poodle himself, along with his, um, kids? I don't know what exactly the playful poodles are in relation to Percy, but yeah, they exist. Anyways. Percy's mechanics work like this. It will appear at the window in front of you and slowly moves towards the right door. As final stage, it will appear right in front of the door before bashing it and trying to knock it open, which is when you have to click and hold the door to lock it. There is a pretty big gap on the latest you can lock the door, so even if you knock it a couple of times, you should be able to lock the door if your reflexes are fast enough. However, failure to do so will end your run. Speaking of, the playful poodles will occasionally peek through the door and you'll need to shut it once it opens. Otherwise, after a while, they'll swing the door wide open, allowing Percy to come in and instantly kill you. Other than that, the poodles don't do anything else. For now. But hey look, at least our pal Percy's becoming normal. Look at that smile. Isn't he so adorable? Oh. Man, why the fuck do I keep getting cut off? This post night minigame is the most time consuming minigame so far. You need to repair 6 different sections to restore the power again, each section requiring you to play randomized games twice to get it back online. Games like navigating through a maze, collecting power, or dodging bullets. But this wouldn't be a post night minigame without another visitor.
It's Roan Rat. Roan Rat works pretty simply in this mini game. If you hear him behind you, turn around and shine your flashlight at him from one of the four tunnels he will pop out of. Once done, he'll go away temporarily. As you get to the halfway mark of restoring power, things get harder. The colors on the computer mainly become red, the games are boosted a little bit in difficulty, and Roan will need to be shined on twice for him to go away. This isn't really exactly that hard though, as he'll just appear in the tunnel across from the one he originally came out of, which I dislike as it's kind of just too easy, and I would have preferred if they just went with a better approach, like making him come out of random tunnels twice, or even making the flashlight start to flash a bit as if it's running out of juice. Either way, you complete the last minigame, the power is back to restoration. Hey boss, I'm halfway done with your favor so far, and it really hasn't been that bad actually. Minus the animatronics malfunctioning, of course, but I'm sure you knew about that. There is... something I'm noticing though. The pal Percy. It's been acting very weird. I've noticed it since around yesterday. It's like every night, something's different with it. Eh, it's probably nothing important. I'll call you again on Friday. On your way out, you notice something on the floor next to the main entrance. It wasn't there before. It's... some kind of disc. You don't know what's on it, but the thought of it makes you question it more. Take the disc? Yes or no? Guess I'll take this home. wonder what's in it though. You decide to take the disc home. Dang thing doesn't seem to work. I'll just head up to bed. I can't be bothered messing with this anymore. This is an important message for customers who recently purchased the PAL Percy electronic toys. Customers who bought this product report that the toy possesses a dangerous threat to children if left on for an extended period of time and or used regularly. For that, we're sorry. Paltronics puts your child first and safety is the utmost importance to us. We're offering full refunds to anyone who returns a toy to our establishment, or to participating stores that sold the toy. Please dispose of the toy immediately, or for assistance, please call the number on your screen. This product will no longer be sold. Thank you for your continued support. The day you wish that was Friday. Let me just check up on my pal Percy, Hey, where did his face go? Eh, whatever. Probably just a glitch. Anyways, during this night, Rowan Rat is thrown into the mix, and actually makes the cameras useful this time. When your camera is flipped up, you can use A or D to switch between camera mode and radar mode. The radar mode looks over cams 1 through 4, and will monitor motion. It will first turn yellow in one of the rooms, which is in the process of scanning, and then turn red, which is a sign Rowan Rat is in the room. After this, you will need to switch back to the camera mode, click on the camera that had the alert, and press the shock button on the bottom right, resetting Rowan back to its original position. Not only do you need to keep an eye out for this on the cameras now, but you'll need to look for a poodle occasionally. The E on the UI can start to flash a danger symbol above it, which is a sign that a poodle is on the loose, and if you don't find it on the cameras and stare at it in time, it will eventually cut the power to your cameras, killing them and making them unusable. It is still possible to win without the cameras, but you better pray that Rowan isn't close to a corner. This night is a huge step up in difficulty compared to the last one, and wow, it is so much fun and chaos having to keep track of the new mechanics and all the old ones from the previous nights, all while trying to do this as fast as possible. The gameplay is seriously fun and super satisfying once you pass the night. Speaking of which... Finally. Is... is he okay? Well clearly he isn't considering our post-shift task is to fix him up. <sighs> well to start, unscrew the four bolts on the back of his head. Once you're done, a weird VR goggle looking area will open and you need to look inside. Four tasks will need to be done in order to fully repair him. 
all while trying to fend off the playful poodles. If you hear something while you are repairing Felix, press E to exit out and look for a poodle to click so it goes away. This game is a little bit like last night's, just with different minigames, but I'll go through each one. The gear minigame is very straightforward. On your screen will appear a 3x3 grid with different colored pegs along with 3 different colored gears. You'll need to put the gears on all the pegs that correspond with the correct colors. Do this 3 times and you'll complete this section. A tip to actually make this go a lot faster on this minigame is that you can actually stack gears which will make things a lot quicker. The next section is like a switch and match type game. You will need to switch the cause to match the effect, which is indicated by the numbers above each of the options. Switch will require you to hold down a button and wait a second before it swaps out options. The option will only go up, so you need to decide which one you should change to be quicker. After getting to the halfway mark and completing the post night task, things will start to ramp up a bit once again, with the playful poodles appearing more often and requiring you to click on them twice. The last two games are really simple, so I'll just go through them really fast. Third mini game is just a crank you need to turn, aka spinning your mouse in a circle, but you shouldn't go too fast otherwise it'll overheat and make you stop spinning for a bit, although it is kind of hard to overheat while cranking. The last mini game is just as simple as Simon says, clicking the colors in order to complete the mini game. I honestly would suggest doing this one first, as it can be hard to memorize the pattern in the second half because the playful poodles will pop out more often, which will cause you to panic and maybe forget the pattern. After all is done, you just need to reboot Felix and it's over. Now, success. Yippee. 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 Nothing new is introduced on Friday. It's just every single mechanic that the oh, game has taught so you the last four nights, which has prepared you for the hardest day. I really do like this though, because it puts everything the game has thrown at you to use, and it's like the final exam of the game. Testing to see if you remember how everything works and how well you can perform. With that being said, Enjoy my gameplay for this night. Hello, Charlie. Oh, yeah, bitch. Motherfucker. Damn, he's been red three times in a row. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh no. How's this scan still in progress, the fuck? Go away! One, one more, one here. Oh yeah. Back. Oh, okay. Hey, Nick. I got the call you left. I want to let you know that I thought the animatronics wouldn't be an issue. I had someone come in before I called you a few days ago to fully repair them. But I guess they're... Still a bit broken. Everyone was repaired except for Percy Poodle. Do you think you can fix him up before you leave? Just so I know he won't cause any trouble. I would really appreciate it if you did. He's too important to be breaking like this. I'll call you once again at my Percy's Playhouse. Thanks. Well, fuck. 
Looks like instead of Felix, you now have to repair Percy. Well, let's just do this and see how it goes. The many mini games to repair Percy's battery are really simple but fun to do. Turning knobs, clicking buttons, and flicking switches. Should be just fine. Speaking of, it worked. Wait, is that fucking smoke? Hey Nick, what's the hold up? You're supposed to be out here right after finishing repairing Percy. Yeah, yeah, I know. He, uh, had a bit of a malfunction. His battery failed, and it's even smoking. Can't find a spare anywhere. I don't know what to do. Oh, that does sound bad. Well, try to find another battery then. Or even use a substitute one. That can work as well. But wouldn't- I'm sure you'll find something regardless. I'll meet you outside once you're done. Wait. But... Where am I going to find a spare battery? Can that thing be quiet already? I swear if I have to hear that beep one more time can't find a spare battery, but he did say a substitute could work, right? I wonder. Insert the pal Percy into Percy's chest. This can't work, right? Like, you're joking. Do you think a fucking toy, a Tamagotchi toy, can power an entire animatronic that has to weigh hundreds of pounds? This is stupid. Huh. Well, that's it. Honestly, this ending was so lackluster and really disappointing. Like, there could have been a lot more than just putting your pal Percy into Percy himself. It's a shame because everything else was per... Perfect. Wait, what the hell is going on? What? What was that? Thank goodness I got out of there and... Where even am I? It's too dark to see anything. I think I can feel something. It almost feels like a light... I'm... in the storage room? I guess that explains why it was so dark. Whatever that thing is, I have to shut it down somehow. There has to be something around here to help. Oh, you thought it was really just gonna end like that? Nope! You know, I first thought that too. But when I tell you, when I saw this shit happen while playing, my jaw literally dropped from how fucking cool that fake out was. Seriously. Anyways, it seems Pal Percy has gone fucking bazoinkers. It's Friday morning, and we are trapped inside the storage room. But luckily, right over here, we have an early model PAL, which even happens to be hooked directly to the power. Unlike your other PAL Percy, this one has completely different minigames. Fishing, matching, 
in a maze. You have to do all these tasks to get a charge, which is 25 points, and you have to get 5 charges all while having limited time this time. This change of pace is honestly so amazing and I have never seen this in a FNAF fan game before. Either way, back to the game, think of the charges like mini knights. Each charge, different mechanics will appear. This first mechanic is looking at the cameras. Once Pal Percy is gone from the center, you need to look for him in the cameras, which will then showcase an object on his screen which you need to look on for other cameras. Don't do this in time, and end your run. Also just a tip for this, you can know exactly when to turn on the cameras to look for the item when the TVs on the left and right side of the room turn on and display a message. You will also need to do tasks on your EM Pal, which is an awesome fucking name by the way. Pretty consistently otherwise that can also kill you if you neglect it too much. All having to be done in under 2 minutes and 45 seconds, and with this banger ass soundtrack in the background. And if you think this is already too much, oh boy, you better strap the fuck in. On your second charge, things will start to bang against the walls, which you can hear from the left or right. If you hear banging, you can drag a cart from either side to prevent the Tamabruti from breaking in. Yes, all the different Tamagotchi enemies have different names. It might get a bit confusing from here, but stick with me. Not only will Tamabruti try to break through the wall, but these ghost poodle things, I honestly don't know their names, will fall from the ceiling on either side and will mess with your camera or EM pal if you don't sideswap with your card in time. Remember, you need to keep track of this and the other shit all before the timer hits zero. Otherwise, you die. Over halfway there now, on your third charge, there will be two more mechanics you need to look for. One of them is pretty familiar. Pal will actually get up and start to stomp his way towards the door in front of you. Similar to Percy's mechanic, you will need to hold the door and lock it when he starts to pound on it. Which might I add, this action is a fucking animated beautifully. Everything in this game is animated beautifully actually, as everything in this game was hand drawn and then animated in Blender. It goes super well together, and the jump from using completely 2D sprites to 3D at the last part of the game is amazingly well done and makes all the animatronics pop even more. But enough of my side tangent, I love the animation style. Back to the game itself. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, you will now have to watch over the cameras even more as Tama Opi will try and crawl through the vents to get to your office. He shares its resting spot on camera 5 with Pal, and once you notice he's gone, you gotta look for him in the cameras and shock him like Rowan. You have a limited amount of shocks though, but it is more than enough. Hey, remember how I said there wasn't any voice acting? Well... Yeah, I kind of lied. I mean, that's basically the only time there's actual voice acting, but it's still voice acting. Now on charge 4, which is when the music really kicks in and becomes even more of a banger. There are now another two more problems. The first one is pretty minor, just occasional bugs that will attach to you. To counter them, don't let them cling on to you for that long, or you'll be jump scared. The other thing is like the playful poodles on the cameras. You need to look for a corrupted poodle on the cameras, which after staring at it for a bit, will disappear. This is much harder though because of the environment, as he blends in a lot and the screen is quite staticky. If you don't do this, then your cards will start to lock up, which if another corrupted poodle comes down, it'll mess you up and you won't be able to use your EM pal or your camera system. On the fifth and final charge, the last two mechanics are introduced. Pal will occasionally come down from the roof and actually make you play a cup and ball game. You need to find the ball between three cups. You are actually able to complete tasks or look at the camera while he is there. I recommend using your mouth to trace where the cup with the ball goes. If you choose the wrong cup, you will end your run. The final mechanic is another simple one. All you need to do is click on the TVs if they turn on. Otherwise, they'll mess with your camera or your pal. After you've gone all five charges, you will need to survive with all the mechanics in place until the music ends, which is around 60 to 70 seconds. I really like this last part of the game because it just ties in everything you learned from this morning and combine them into the final conclusion of Percy's Playhouse. Enough talking, let's finish this.
Is it over? Do you know I'm still in here? I need to get out and leave. However I can. Is Percy still after me? What were those creatures? Are they dead now? Can I get out of here? Where's Percy? Do you think you've won, you little prick? We are supposed to be best pals, Nick. I was supposed to stick by you forever and ever. And now you're just going to leave me? You can't. I won't let you. You can still take me with you. We can still be best pals forever. This is what pal purses are made for, Nick. You understand that, right? So come on in. I... I'm not. What did you just say? I'm... I'm not taking you with me. Alright then, suit yourself. W wait, really? Tisk tisk tisk. Choosing yourself over your friend. That's cold. I did give you a chance, Nick. But it looks like I'll have to end this friendship myself. Permanently. Ha 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 ha. Are we clear? Are you sure? Alright then, send it. Did you say something? It almost sounded like... <sighs> Nick? Are, are you there? Won't you help me? Your best pal, Percy? W where are you going? Come back and help me! Don't just leave me here. We're best pals! Nick! Nick, is that you over there? There you are. You were wondering if you got out already, so we assumed you did end. You didn't tell me the pal Percy was. You didn't say it could do all that. There were wires, and, and they were all alive, and... Slow down, son. I can't do that. They recalled, didn't you know? Huh? Calm down, let me explain. Those pal Percy's went absolutely crazy the more people used them. Never found out why. I assumed it was because they used the same batteries as the robots, but I never really thought much of it after they were culled. So that's what was on that disc. Huh, only got it working. So you see, none of them exist now. Technically, but I guess we forgot about one of them in there. I hope it didn't try to kill you or something. Hehe. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness it didn't. Anyway, come on, let's go get something to eat. I'm starving. Oh, uh, okay, sure. So finally, got the actual ending. Percy's playhouse is finally destroyed, and we get the credits with extra drawing, which are always really lovely to see. The winners of the fan art contest the team held, and one final photo of little pal Percy being quite the angry pal. After beating the game, you will get a ton of bonuses including information on the characters, animations of the jump scares, photos of the environments, development progress, scrapped content, the ability to rewatch cutscenes, the art contest winners, all the team members, and a silly gallery that has comics and drawings of the Percy crew, which I 110% recommend you look through. There is also an endless mode if you connect your Game Jolt account. You can partake in a never-ending night at Percy's, racking up points to try and climb the ranks on the scoreboard. Along with endless mode and all the bonuses, there's a free play mode that allows you to play through all five nights. You can choose to play just a normal night, the post shift, or the entire thing. And of course it wouldn't be a FNAF fan game without a custom night. This custom night allows you to play with the AI levels of the normal night animatronics, and also the boss animatronics, with their own unique preset challenges, which will unlock up to an extra four new animatronics if you complete 
and all the challenges. I haven't beaten these modes yet, and I didn't plan on doing so for this video, but if this video gets enough support and requests, I'll make a video on beating all the modes, unlocking the secret characters, explaining how they work, and other things as well. There's also a secret ending if you complete the aggressive Parasitic Pals mode, which I'll show now. Just great! Like one chance to be someone's pal just had to have been that guy! Now look at me! Just right back where I started! No matter. I'm sure someone dumb enough will snoop around. And then they'll see. You'll see I can be a good pal! Yeah! I'll just have to wait for the right moment! Eventually. You know, I would sympathize with the guy except for the fact he tried to FUCKING KILL US. One last final thing I would like to go over before I give my final thoughts, Fazzy did upload a video on his YouTube channel, which revealed the canon voices for all the animatronics. I'll go ahead and play that now, and then give my thoughts. I haven't slept a wink in three we we weeks, and all I get is you goddamn poodles making all this racket out there. It's gotta stop! Aw, uh, come on, Rowan. Do you at least want to have a little fun? All you ever talk about is just sleeping in the caverns. I get it, like, you're broken and all, but like... Come on, man. At least have a little bit of fun if you can. It's not that hard. Hey, look at me. Look how playful these poodles are. Huh, get it? Now when did I say you could look away? This is my show! <laughs> it's my time to shine. Easy there, Tagger. It's not all about you around here. I mean, this is Percy's Playhouse after all. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, as much as I appreciate you inviting me to play in the bullpen, I have some things I need to do. But I'll meet you on the main stage, alright? I don't know where to start to describe how much I love this game. The colorful characters, environments, amazing gameplay mechanics, cutscenes, sound design. Every single part of this game is just so well crafted. Especially the sound design, that is handcrafted so well to not only scare the player, but help them as well while playing the game with its unique audio cues. Fazzy really shows his art skills here as well with all these hand drawn visuals. And the fact he was not just the main artist, but the director, additional animator, and main coder of this project really shows his potential. The gameplay is unlike anything I've seen before from a FNAF fan game, and gives the game a ton of replayability with people trying to speedrun nice to try to get the best rank they can. This game has a ton of potential within the speedrunning community, and it would be awesome to see how players can push this game to its limits, just like they did with the FNAF games. While Fazzy was the main person in charge of this project, I think everyone else who worked on the game should also be mentioned because it really wouldn't have been possible without them as well. So I'll show a list of everyone who worked on this project, and leave a link to the game in the description. Please go play it and have fun. Before I end this video, I want to give a huge shout out to the people who helped make this video, and I want to give a huge shout out to Maynoxa and uh yeah for being huge inspirations to me and inspiring me to make videos. Especially Minoxa's Flumpty's video, you should totally check that out, and was kind of the reason why I made this video. Another YouTuber I would like to thank who doesn't actually make FNAF videos, but I am inspired by, is Skulldeck. If you can't tell, his editing style is basically a way better version of mine, and he makes some awesome content on Counter-Strike. And he's also how I found about these silly cat and dog photos, so huge thanks to him. Thank you to Fazzy for obviously putting together this incredible game with the team. I really enjoyed it and want others to enjoy it as well. Also thank you to my friend Zylo, who was also in voice call with me while I was playing this game, even though he fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> Lastly, thank you to the viewer for watching this video. The amount of support I got in the last video was absolutely insane and what I've never expected to grow this fast in such a short amount of time. It really blows my mind that so many people enjoy my content and want more. This video has taken me a while to rewrite the script, chord, and edit, so it really means a lot you stuck to the end. If you have any other ideas or things you want me to make a video on, please comment down below and thank you so much for watching. Do what you do when you've enjoyed the video, and hopefully, I'll see you again soon. 
Bye. Wait, what about the gift basket?